The questions of services at a distance, uh, health plans and government programs are beginning to cover telemedicine. Uh, in Minnesota, it's mandated coverage for Medicaid. And just to remember, again, there are different models. One is that you have a system of clinics or you have the VA system that's hardwired where it's a pretty secure transmission. Then you have people that have purchased, and we're going to talk about some systems in a minute, or you have people that are out there doing it on Skype or something. We'll talk about all those in just a second. But in general, services at a distance have the challenge of you having less information. You can't smell alcohol in the breath. There's a lot of things you can't see or understand. There are a lot of things you can't perceive. And there are also management of the crisis coverage is harder. And again, the hypothetical is you get a crisis call, but to figure out who to get a hold of in that community is not going to be easy and you can't do it readily. And the worst thing is if you're holding someone on the phone, that's your communication. You've got to get rid of, get them off the phone and stop talking to them to make those calls. So there are challenges that are sort of unavoidable. Uh, but that's a reality. Now, let's go back and look at a couple of these systems and talk about uh, Skype. Skype, for those of you who don't know it, is basically a free service that transmits a, a video image. So you're talking into a phone or computer, that image is going so they not only hear your voice, but they see you and you see them. And I remember when Skype first came in, one of our, uh, vol one of our volunteers was a psychologist whose son was in New Zealand working and they could stay in touch with Skype. They did it all the time. So clients asking about it, no, no surprise. It's free and easy, but not HIPAA compliant. We'll talk about that in a second. Uh, if you look at something like that, um, you have lots of situations where it might make sense. Again, uh, a situation where somebody is out of town, but they know you, you've worked with them, a, a single session or several sessions might make sense. The only alternative is to not do them because fundamentally the people are not going to uh, probably line up a local service, get an appointment quickly enough, get the other person up to speed enough to be of any help. So except for an extreme emergency requiring a hospitalization, they're not going to get the supportive therapy. It, you just can't do that that quickly. Um, now, um, the uh, other piece that you've got to look at with these situations is that uh, you can also do things on the phone without being able to see somebody. So that's an option. Uh, now, there are systems which cost a good deal of money that major businesses use. Whenever you hear that a business is doing long-term conferencing, they're typically doing it on a service that is expensive but has all of those protections. They're not worried about HIPAA, they're worried about industrial espionage. Uh, now, state licensing laws are beginning to address this, but only in some states. And the problem is this stuff is sort of unfolding now. Generally speaking, if you have a license in the state you're delivering service, that's fine. The problem comes in where you're delivering service to someone out of state. Some states have laws that allow for service by people not licensed in the state. Some do not. The attempts to get a national system in psychology and social work have not gotten really far. There are a bunch of jurisdictions that are not signing on. So you can't, as a psychologist, social worker, LPC, you can't go out routinely and presume that you wouldn't be in trouble for delivering a service in the other state. Now, theoretically, the service is being delivered by you in the state you're sitting in when you deliver it, but the recipient is elsewhere. So the question has always been, well, where is the service? And for many things, you're using your own standards, and the service is in your locale. That's the main place. But there are situations where you might be breaking a law in another state. Obviously, if you go out of the country, no problem. It's ironic. It's within the country the issue is. Or uh, Now, uh, the, the challenge here uh, is multi-factor. Multi